The Wild West is a lawless place where cowboys and outlaws rule the land. Amidst all the chaos, there is a man feared by many and revered by some. He is none other than Bill Doolin, the Wild West's greatest gang leader. He's the leader of the Wild Bunch, also known as the Dalton Gang, and he has sown fear into the hearts of his enemies. But who is Bill Doolin, and how did he become the most notorious outlaw in the American West? Join us as we explore the life of this infamous figure while delving into the stories of his legendary feats. Bill Doolin's legacy as the Wild West's greatest gang leader is one that will never be forgotten. William M. Bill Doolin, also known as Will Berry, was born in 1858 in Johnson County, Arkansas, to Michael Doolin and Artemenia Beller Doolin. At the age of 23, he ventured into the Wild West working various odd jobs until luckily landing a cowboy position at the HX Bar Ranch on the Cimarron River in the Indian Territory in 1881. This ranch is owned by Oscar D. Halsell, a Texan who saw the potential in Doolin and convinced him. Halsell taught Doolin basic math and reading, writing skills and quickly promoted him to an informal foreman on the farm. Over the next 10 years, Doolin continued to be trusted, working as a cowboy in various locations. He was exposed to cowboys and outlaws, famous at the time. Among them were George Bitter Creek Newcomb, Charlie Pierce, Bill Power, Dick Broadwell, Bill Tulsa Jack Blake, and Dan Dynamite Dick Clifton and Emmett Dalton. Doolin became an outlaw in the 1890s, collaborating with the infamous Dalton Gang on a number of train and bank robberies. However, the first time he broke the law occurred in 1891 when he and some friends were celebrating July 4th by knocking a keg of beer in Coffeyville, Kansas. Unfortunately, Kansas was a dry state at the time, and when the attorneys tried to confiscate their alcohol, a major scuffle broke out, injuring two lawmen. Doolin and his gang quickly fled the scene, and he became a wanted man, starting a life of a criminal. On October 5, 1892, the Dalton gang attempted to rob two banks in Coffeyville, Kansas. The plan failed miserably, resulting in the deaths of Bob and Grat Dalton, Bill Power, and Dick Broadwell. Only Emmett Dalton survived the theft and was sentenced to many years in prison for his involvement. Although Doolin was not officially involved in the crime, it saved his life, at least for the time being. Since that tragic day, however, some historians have claimed that there was a sixth gang member in the alley holding his horses who managed to escape. Although the identity of the sixth man remains a mystery, many believe it is likely Bill Doolin. In time, Doolin quickly formed another gang the Oklahombre, who were also known as the Wild Bunch and the Oklahoma Long Riders. The gang terrorized the American heartland by robbing banks, shops, wagons, and trains in Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. This gang is a group of many characters including Bill Dawton, George Redbuck Whitman, and many others. Even two teenage girls known as Little Britches and Cattle Annie joined the gang. Doolin wastes no time on getting his new gang up and running. On November 1, 1892, they robbed the Ford County Bank in Spearville, Kansas, taking away a substantial amount of cash and more than $1,500 in banknotes. Authorities quickly released descriptions of the robbers, and the city sheriff in Stillwater, Oklahoma recognized Oliver All Yantis' description. A team was sent to find him, and in a tragic turn of events, Yantis was the first member of the team to die in a gunfight on November 29, 1892, in Orlando, Oklahoma Territory. On March 14, 1893, he married Edith Ellsworth of Ingalls, Oklahoma, and of Kingfisher. It's unclear if she knew about his outlaw lifestyle, but Edith stood by him all the way. The couple went on to have a son named Jay. 
On June 11, 1893, Bill Doolin and his accomplices re resumed their criminal work. They ventured to intercept a train near Cimarron, Kansas, and obtained a large amount of silver worth about $1,000. They were soon pursued by a determined group of law enforcement officers tracking them north of Fort Supply, Oklahoma. A big shooting happened. Bullets flew everywhere. Doolin was hit by bullets and injured his left foot. Although he was lucky to escape, he had to limp for the rest of his life as a reminder of the events of that day. In August of 1893, several members of Doolin's gang, including Bill Dalton, George Red Buck Waitman and others took refuge in Ingalls, Oklahoma. They stayed in a city hotel and spent time at the Ransom Saloon. They were in town for weeks, but their hideout was soon discovered by Field Marshal Evett Dumas Ed Nix. The team of 27 deputy marshals and the Indian police immediately took action. The group was camping along a creek the night before the raid when a young man saw them and was kept overnight by his deputy. The next morning, the boy escapes and stumbles across Ingalls, warning the outlaws that the sheriff is coming. On September 1st, the team quickly entered the town of Ingalls fully armed. The ensuing battle, known as the Battle of Ingalls, was a famous gunfight that claimed the lives of three deputy marshals and two townspeople. One of the townspeople died protecting the outlaws demonstrating the deep-seated loyalty some have for the gang. During the gunfight, George Bitter Creek Newcomb was mortally wounded but managed to escape, while Arkansas Tom Jones, responsible for the deaths of three delegates and one citizen, was eventually captured. Although he was later paroled, Jones went on to rob another bank before being killed by police in Missouri in 1924. After the battle, the Doolin pirates were briefly weakened, but they quickly regrouped and continued their reign of terror. In January 1894, Charlie Pierce and George Red Buck Waitman set up a shop and post office in Clarkson, Oklahoma. And just weeks later, the gang robbed the Farmer Citizens Bank in Pawnee, Oklahoma. They earned a substantial amount of money. The gang's criminal activities continued, and on March 10th, they robbed the Santa Fe Railroad Station in Woodward, Oklahoma, earning more than $6,000. On April 1st, 1894, Bill Dalton and Bitter Creek Nocum of the Doolin Gang attempted to rob a store in Sacred Heart, Oklahoma, but they were met with stiff resistance by retired Vice Marshal W.H. Carr. Carr recognized Dalton and reached for his gun, but Newcomb shot him in the wrist. Despite his injuries, Carr managed to shoot and wound Newcomb in the shoulder. Dalton then shot Carr in the stomach before two robbers fled on horseback. The gang continues its activities. On May 10, 1894, a gang robbed a bank in Coffeyville, Kansas and wounded several others. But soon, Bill Dalton left the gang to form his own new gang. With his new gang, he robbed the first national bank in Longview, Texas, on May 23, 1894. Bill Doolin went to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, with his wife to treat his ailing leg. Apparently his foot, which had been hit by a bullet a few years ago, was now suffering with rheumatism. However, he was unable to get past the staunch attorney, Bill Tilgman. On January 1896, Tilgman single-handedly apprehended the notorious outlaw, and without any resistance, Doolin was arrested and sent back to Oklahoma, where he awaited trial in Guthrie Prison. Despite being locked up, Doolin had an escape plan, and he executed it perfectly with the help of Dynamite Dick Clifton and several others on July 5, 1896. While his wife sought refuge in Lawson, Oklahoma, Doolin and his comrades fled, but their freedom was short-lived. On August 24, 1896, Doolin was tracked down by U.S. Vice Marshal Heck Thomas. When Doolin refused to surrender, Thomas did not hesitate to shoot him dead with a shotgun. But Doolin's lifeless body is on display in Guthrie, Guthrie Oklahoma, where a local photographer took two pictures of the notorious outlaw. 
However, his family did not want to let his memory fade. They printed postcards with his poem and sold them along with the paintings for 25 cents each. The proceeds were intended to cover Doolin's burial costs, but the government ultimately paid for the embalming and burial, as the body had to be preserved for identification purposes. Doolin is laid to rest at the Boot Hill section of Summit Cemetery in Guthrie, Oklahoma. His widow filed a lawsuit against the Marshal of the United States for $50,000 in damages for her husband's illegitimate death, but the case was finally dismissed in February 1897. Bill Doolin is one of the Wild West's most notorious and feared outlaws. Doolin's legacy lives on to this day as a symbol of the wild and lawless era of American history. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.